Well, I'm joined by uh, some people here in the studio today to talk about domestic violence here in the Isle of Man and uh, the potential for changing the law. And, and we'll come to your story in a minute because you've definitely got this story to tell. But, but you're behind this uh, online campaign yeah. that you think the Isle of Man, as it stands, the sentencing isn't as great or as good or whatever as you'd like. And there has been a quite a high profile case in the, the papers only a few weeks ago, which we don't need to go into yeah. by, by thing. But is that an example how pe when people read it in the newspaper, things are being done and they can get a very well suspended sentence in that particular case. But yeah. over to you. Is this that the problem? Is unfortunately, typical of a lot of cases. Yes. Um, um, domestic violence itself isn't a crime. So a lot of aspects of abuse, such as the emotional, psychological, financial abuse, generally doesn't reach court at all. And that can be some of the most damaging types of domestic abuse. Um, and the physical has to be dealt with under different laws, if you see what I mean. So, for example, by calling it common assault or GBH or ABH. And to me, that immediately kind of contracts the picture because then you're just focused on the physical injury. You're not looking at the overall picture of abuse, which is really quite complex and needs a different specialised approach that understands all the ramifications. Um, and probably because of it not being criminal generally, um, a lot too many cases in my opinion end up in magistrate's court, not criminal court. And again, a magistrate's hands are tied because they're limited in the well, sentences they, they can give out. First hand with this, you, 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 survive is a terrible word, but someone's had to deal with this sort of thing. And what, what's your take on this? Um, well, I've not actually experienced um, domestic violence as in physical violence. What my own personal experience is, um, dealing with emo emotional and mental abuse and um, looking at how these patterns start from childhood and it just carries on and on throughout throughout life. I mean, I've had, um, I've been through a marriage um, and I dealt with emotional and mental abuse with, with that and um, that's how I came to meet uh, Tam. I reached out to 3S and it was a, a, a um, safe, secure, strong and it was a forum for like minded people, women mostly, um, of course it, it, it happens to men as well, but um, it was a place just to talk and um, for, for issues like this, they are so complex like Tam says, mm. but it's a case of let's talk about it, the more that we talk and I found um, so much support knowing that I wasn't the only one and um, there's many people out there. So when, in, in your case was not at the time much places to go for help or, or you lacking that sort of backup from the actual people who should be helping you, you know, departments? Well, yeah, I know. I, I mean, it's not such a, an encouraging, with the, the, the recent case that we're talking about here, it's not so encouraging. If, if the system can't support, um, who, who, who do we turn to? Um, yeah, and at the moment for me, just talking about it with other women has been, has been invaluable. Yeah, can I chip in there as well? Yeah. Um, my abuse situation was in a different country, but where I was, there was a different approach and there was a regular support group at the local, they didn't even call it a women's refuge, they called it a family abuse centre. And I knew that I could, I could go there once a week, every week if I needed to. And I did that for two years while I was living with my abusive partner. And there was no pressure on me to leave or do anything, but it was somewhere I could go and I could just get things off my chest and say, this has happened this week. And it's really hard to put your finger on why it helps because usually there wasn't any direct help given or even advice, yeah. but being able to sit in that room yeah. and tell what was happening to me and have it kind of validated by the experiences of the other people in that room who had been going through or were going through the same thing really group, helped. Really? Yeah, really, kind of. Um, and I went there, like I say, for two years, then I stopped going. Then the abuse got really, really severe and I went back and there was never any issue of, you know, criticising me for having stopped going or, you know, yeah. um, just understanding, like like Greenberg said, just an open place you can talk about it. Because generally, I think people don't talk about it. It is kind of a sort of elephant in yeah. the room that we don't like to talk about. But also, I know I didn't want to talk about it with my friends because I didn't want to be a kind of negative gloomy presence to my friends you know what i mean yeah. i wanted to yeah. so in the other man there's a massive you think there's like an iceberg situation here just a little yeah, bit yeah. above and there's so yeah. much going on that no one's even yeah. reported no one's talking about it yeah, yeah. um statistically worldwide it affects at least one in three women and one in six men and um 
but it's still, even though it's such a massive problem, it's like I say, it's still not really talked about. What do you want to do? I mean, do you just want to see bigger sentences or do you want to see more support or both? both. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. I suppose it's an obvious question. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just hugely complicated. I would, yeah. uh, we'd like better sentences. We'd like a better law. Um, we would like better training for deemsters, judges, magistrates, anyone dealing with abuse so that they understand the complexity yeah. of it. Sure, and in schools as well. Yeah, oh. starting young. Yeah, yeah. Oh, right. children okay. need support yeah. drastically. Um, need support because they're, they're seeing this abuse going on. They're seeing think? it and for too long people have said, oh well they weren't in the room or they weren't actually hurt. If they're in that family yeah. where that is the dynamic, they are being hurt on a daily basis. Um, there's huge mental damage. Um, like I said, in my situation, there was a woman's group that I could go to. There wasn't a similar group for my children. I could take them with me and they'd go in the crash, but that was it. They were just playing with other children from abused families. So to mi mirror UK law or to better you? Well, I say better, well. change, you know, be, be... Certainly mirror. If we could do better, then do better. How are you going to go about this, though? You going well, up Timwald Hill if you need to? Are you if going we to, need to. You going yeah. to do an act of yeah, yeah. grievance? Um, we did address the petition to Tinwald generally and to specific named MHKs who we hoped would be sympathetic. I can think I've quite a few that it. must be yeah. very sympathetic. I've emailed it to several of them. Do you find ladies are more sympathetic than men, or is that really me being too sexist on that one? Things are changing. Aren't <sighs> yeah. They? I think there's more and more men opening up yeah, to this now. I think so, and it's been yes. very encouraging that a lot of men have signed the petition. And the reason we went for a petition was because there already was a bit of a social out outcry on social media, and I was impressed by how many men were. Okay, let's talk about this. You got a, yeah. Is it a Facebook group that you got going, or one of those petition things? Uh, it's a change.org petition. Right. Um, you should be able to find it by searching on change.org, but it's also on our Safe, Strong, Secure 3S Facebook page. It's also on the Isle of Man News and Politics Facebook page and Women of Man Facebook page. So any of those, you should be able to find the link to the petition. And you're going to be singing soon, I hear. Yeah. Are you going to take part as well? Yeah, a flash mob outside Marxies, amongst <laughs> other places. This is uh, good stuff. Um, well, really what's that, to raise awareness? Sort of? Yes, basically. Yeah. Um, it's part of um, I Can't Keep Quiet Day, which is quite a new movement, but it's an international movement. Um, it started... Um, there's a song by the artist Milk called Quiet. The first part of the song is about, um, I can't keep quiet about these issues any longer. And the second half of the song is about, if you have got this, let it out and there will be people who understand and hear you and help you. So that song fits really well with our message. Um, but it kind of, the song took a life of its own really after the, mo the Women's March on Washington and it's been used for um, sexual assault and domestic violence, but also for racism, almost any issue that someone feels yeah. strongly about and needs talking about. So that this day will make a point. So you, many people yeah. you can get along. Yeah, please join us um, on the April the 7th in Strand Street. Um, 1 p.m. is the time. Everyone does it at one o'clock in their own time zone. Um, and hopefully we'll have a little, I can't keep quiet. Okay, finally, I don't know who wants to do this, or both of you. It, you know, Someone watching this now, who is exactly where you have been, what's your advice to them? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Show me to go talk, first. Yeah. 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 Talk about yeah. it. And you got a camera there, you can talk yeah, to yeah. them. Yeah. Well, what I'd say, I'm lucky um, I've not been through the, the, the physical uh, violence that does go on for many. Um, it's both parties, the, the abusive or the abuser or the victim. Um, they share a common ground, and that is the, a core issue of self-esteem. Um, somebody wrongs another, often due to the, the rage, the pain, the criticism that they may have received from their parents or whoever bullied them. It's an ongoing vicious cycle with it, and, and both both parties, if um, when looking at self-esteem and doing the work, the help is out there. Um, I'm lucky with my ex-husband. Um, he has been very forthcoming and doing the work and actually working through. So he realised oh, he was... Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I'm very it. lucky we've got a healthy dynamic oh, and, you know, I not am... Not always a, the case, of course. Not always the and case. And you didn't have that originally. It, it, you've worked you've for that, We have you? worked yeah. for it. Both of us have, mm. yeah. So, OK, come forward. Is, is a helpline number, you know, one of those UK national numbers that people can ring or do they want to get in touch with you? How would you like um, to be done? If they want to get in touch with us, they can mm. message us through the Facebook page or the telephone number is 383050. If you do ring, the phone might not be answered, so leave a message, but always leave a message to let us know that it's safe to call you back, because we don't want to be calling back 
you know, if some if that phone is likely to be answered by the abuser and get the person. And you're a support trouble. group. You rather than you're not going to start things balls rolling yourself. I mean, you know, you, you just listen, do you, sort of thing. Yeah, we listen, we help practically where we can, we Give signpost advice. people, um, we can signpost people to legal advice, yeah. um, we try and get them help, We're, depending on what the person needs, we will do our utmost to help or put them in touch with someone who can help. Um, we've built a new website which we're hoping to launch this week, so keep watching the Facebook page and hopefully the website information will be up there soon as well. But yeah, talk about it. And that applies to the petition as well. Talk about it at work. You know, don't let this be a taboo subject anymore. Let's get the whole of the Isle of Man Society talking about it and hopefully doing something about it.